What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet VGC video. Today we're gonna have a bit of an unscripted video, I just have a couple of notes. Um, and what I wanna talk about is the rise of Fissure Don Dozo. Uh, and while it isn't necessarily right now like getting super, super popular, it's like in the back of everyone's mind and that's for good reason. Let me actually pull up like Victory Road VGC so we can see like how uh, Don Dozo's been doing in tournaments. Um, what's the most recent big tournament that they have on here? Just so I can like pull it up here. It, this is the Welcome to Valdea tournament. It's kind of old now. It happened, what, like 25 days ago. But like, let's, let's just use this. It's early format, but I, I just want to like talk about like Don Dozo in general, right? Uh, so we'll just have that up. So, uh, let me, we're not going to get to the fissure part immediately. I have to like, I have to like set some background for that. I have to explain why people are considering fissure nowadays. Um, and how people are answering the fissure. Don Dozo is the sort of Pokemon that like forces itself to react to new builds of itself. It's very interesting. I think that's called being centralizing, but I'm not sure. <laughs> but yeah, uh, so like originally Don Dozos were like more offensive. They actually wouldn't really run um, unaware as often as they would run like Oblivious because Oblivious would allow it to um, be immune to Intimidate. But as the format progressed, we slowly understood that Intimidate didn't have nearly as much value as it did in previous formats uh, because of the prevalence of, you know, crit Pokemon like Meow Scarada, um, Defiant Pokemon like King Gambit, Clear Amulet being on like every Garchomp at the beginning, and also Annihilate just really disincentivizing bringing um, Intimidate Pokemon because they just give it a Defiant boost. So yeah, uh, because of that, it became less and less like optimal to run oblivious to avoid intimidate uh and more optimal to run unaware because unaware uh allows you to attack and ignore defense boosts from pokemon uh as well as offensive stat boosts from pokemon while you're receiving damage so like let's say that you're facing like a plus six garchomp and it goes for a terra ground earthquake into your don dozo uh you're still gonna eat that up and just ignore the fact that it has those offensive boosts it's gonna bounce off of you like it's nothing so that's a reason why unaware is picked up in usage um but the issue with that is uh that don dozo while it's not too problematic going into non Dondozo mirror matches. The existence and prevalence of Dondozo teams, I feel like I'm gonna say it a lot, I'm gonna say Dondozo a lot in this video, has led to Dondozo needing to make sure they don't lose the mirror match. Now, let me explain the nuances of a Dondozo mirror match that a lot of people probably didn't realize um, until playing in a tournament. So, Let's say that these two teams are facing each other, Ripdozo and Warcrime. <laughs> now, uh, they're both using unaware Don Dozo. Neither Dozo is going to be able to break the other Dozo, given that there isn't some weird interaction like one's Terra Grass and one's Terra Flying Terra Blast. Like, you know, uh, for the most part, because they ignore each other's stat boost and they're both physical attackers with high physical defense, um, they're going to deal like 20. 15% to each other each turn that'll get recovered off by leftovers, rest, substitute, not substitute, but like substitute will be like annoying to break, that sort of thing. The match will go on forever in a stalemate and no one will take any pieces if the Don Dozo are ever on the field at the same time with the Tatsugiri in their mouth because there's no switch that can be made, there's nothing that can be done. So the way that Don Dozo matches are decided, and this happened to me yesterday in a tournament, I was playing against this very nice lady um, and we both had unaware Don Dozo, which we realized turn four. However, turn two on the lead, because no Don Dozo player worth worth their their salt or whatever the saying is, um, will lead off with Don Dozo because it's a bad idea. I ended up taking her Golden Go turn two, and because of that one piece being gone, um, the match was effectively decided in the first two minutes of the game but it remains, it had to be played for the remainder of the 20 minutes until I, I won by timer. And there was no way for me to lose. Consecutive earthquake crits would have done like 30%. Like that's how bad we were talking. So we basically just had to sit there and make conversation. Now keep in mind, this was a best of one practice tournament. In best of three, this might not be as much of an issue, but it also has the bigger potential to be a worse issue with every round going to 75 minutes because everyone has used the maximum amount of time because every game with a Don Dozo mirror goes to timer, meaning that everyone's day gets held up. Um, 
Don Dozo players have realized this. And there are a couple of ways that this can be solved. Uh, and we'll get into the fissure thing in a minute, because that's that's like the extreme answer. Uh, but here's the other answer. Uh, maybe that maybe we'll figure out that it's optimal to not bring your Don Dozo to the Don Dozo mirror match. Uh, because it's much easier to beat the opposing Dozo when you have tools that you can pivot around with. Skeledurge, Gothitelle, Golden Go. Like, maybe I can just, like, Shadow Ball drop their special defense. Or, like, use Skeledurge, Terra Grass to beat them and, like, Fake Out Spam to beat it. Maybe that's the optimal play to beating Don Dozo. But, also, technically, the easiest way that someone can beat the Dondozo, assuming that the opponent brought their Dondozo, is to just remove that piece early, get in their Dozo, and sit for 20 minutes. That is a thing that we can do. Um, but what sucks about that is, let's say that both opponents fail to take a piece. How is the game now decided? It once again goes to timer, but now the match is decided by who has the most HP at the end of the game. If both Dondozo are running rest, and every Pokemon is at full health um, by the end of the game because the Dondozo rested on the final turn, the game is now decided by which opponent has more total HP, like the physical number. So it then becomes optimal for the Dondozo mirror to have as much HP as possible, which is really weird. That's an extreme of the situation. It won't happen that often, but that, that, is, a, that is an outcome that will happen more often than it would than it would in like other VGC games, right? Like that's like a weird thing. So now let's get into like how Dondozo have started adapting to beat each other. So the original Dondozo was offensive and then the response to that was the defensive Dondozo running unaware so it always beat the opposing, the, the offensive Dondozo by just spamming like order of body press. Like that was a thing. Um, and then, you know, other Dondozo just kept running like unaware but offensive with like leftovers so, like this is uh we'll, we'll get to the terra flying set in a second but like terra grass would do it like it would be like protect wave crash order of earthquake leftovers unaware uh but offensive now and they would just play it like a tank sometimes they don't even run order up anymore sometimes they'll run like substitute over order up because there's not really a need to get more attack boosts um than you have right like you just want the attack boost and then just hit stuff because it doesn't help you in the unaware matchups and it's not like it really matters that much in the grand scheme of things so sometimes you can just run sub uh so that's a thing so in 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 the in response to like don dozo mirror matches becoming just so annoying to face there has been some talk in some experimentation of fissure don dozo here we are at the topic of the video fissure don dozo technically speaking is a solution to this um disregarding a couple of things, right? You have to, the thing, here's the thing, right? So like, technically speaking, Fissure Don Dozo can end a stalemate instantly. I did the math at a Taco Bell last night after the tournament, and it might be wrong because I did it at a Taco Bell, but it's like a 90-ish percent chance that out of eight fissures, you land at least one. That being said, neither Don Dozo is guaranteed to land the fissures, and if either one of the Don Dozos has substitute, the game remains in a stalemate until one person runs out of all 16 substitutes. And then you can start going for fissures so you don't end up wasting one because you need every opportunity possible. But let's say that the opposing Don Dozo doesn't have substitute and you do. Now it's just whoever lands fissure first, which is kind of up to luck, which a lot of people wouldn't like, I would imagine. Uh, so in response to fissure Don Dozo, now we have Terra Flying Dondozo, which is more offensive because it it like always beats the Fissure Dondozo, hypothetically speaking, because um, Fissure has such low PP that like just having more PP with Protect, Wave Crash, Terra Blast, Earthquake will hypothetically win you the war um, because their Fissure can't ever hit you. So like that's a thing. Uh, but but also, <laughs> it still beats the things that Dondozo didn't want to lose to before. Grass types like Meow Scarada, uh, you know, it does. It no longer has like the normal uh, water weaknesses, except for Electric. You know, like that's that's a thing. Um, or what am I saying? Like it 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 only has like the Electric weakness, um, where before it had like Electric and Grass, right? Uh, so yeah, uh, and it's not that bad because there aren't that many like really really good Electric types except for like Rotom. Uh, but I think Raichu is like a thing now. Kind of, but yeah, no, that's a thing. So Dondozo Terra Flying is now a thing to counter like the the fissure sets. So that's really weird. Um, I want to talk about 
just, I mean, I feel like I've already talked enough about it, but like, this is like such a weird thing that I don't think has really happened in Pokemon before, where a really bulky, stally Pokemon has reached a point of Oko moves technically being viable on them. I think that the last time an Oko move was technically viable was occasionally you would see like a sheer cold Lapras, which wasn't super common. And occasionally you would see like a Guillotine Cartana, which I think top cut a couple of 2017 tournaments, um, or at least like one in, in, in my memory, uh, because Guillotine Cartana could like sometimes pick up a KO on like Pokemon that it would get walled out by. So yeah, um, I, what I want to do is now that I've explained like the background of like Don Dozo, how it got to this point, how matches are going to timer because of Dondozo and how Fissure is a thing that Dondozo are running. Um, I want to kick it to you guys and I want to get your opinions in the comment section down below. Uh, what do you think about this thing with Dondozo? Why, like how Fissure is somewhat optimal now um, in the Dondozo problem really? Because like I love the Pokemon. I love playing it. I think it's very fun for me to play personally because I like the strategy of like removing things to allow for the opening for Dondozo to just power through it. Um, but these mirror matches are getting a little bit crazy. So yeah, I want to know your opinions. Do you think it's like a problematic Pokemon? Uh, do you guys like playing it? Do you guys hate it? Let me know. I'm in the camp of liking it, but I'm starting to feel a little bit weary about Fissure becoming the answer after playing in a tournament, um, where like the timer like went every round because of this thing. So yeah, let me know. If you guys enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe, turn on notifications, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.